Bio3D Web is an online application built on top of the Bio3D package for interactive investigation of protein structure ensembles. In particular, it allows you to map and explore the structural, conformational, and dynamic properties of proteins for which there are high resolution structures available. Bio3D Web has five main uh, areas of functionality, or five main sections, and these are accessible from the topmost navigation bar. And we begin our interaction with the app by clicking on the first of these, the search tab. Help on various aspects of the app usage, including each of these major sections, is available by clicking on the information icons, which will bring up background information as well as uh, actual documentation or links to the help pages. And typically, we'll begin using the app by entering in a single PDB structure code or four letter accession code, four character PDB accession code. We can also enter in a single protein sequence or in cases where you already know a set of structures that you maybe want to limit or restrict your future analysis to, you can access that input option here also. So what we do is type in a four character code of interest, for example, on the, we're interested in the lab here is a small G protein, RAS. So this pulls up its annotation in the PFAM database and also displays a simplified structure representation here that we can make sure we're dealing with the structure we want. So we can change some simple aspects of that structure view here. The app also automatically performs a search of the entire PDB for related entries. And these entries are presented as a ranked and annotated list or table in panel C down here, but also as a overview plot where we're ranking each structure according to its similarity to your query. And what the app does is automatically select the top hits or the most similar structures for further analysis. And then you can proceed to investigate the particular details of those. You can show different uh, features of their annotations, for example. And you can also uh, click on individual structures to exclude them or include them from further analysis, for example. And then continue with the next step, which is the Align tab. This initiates a multiple alignment of your selected structures with an overview of that alignment being shown first. Now, aligned portions are indicated in grey here, and the white segments are actually unaligned regions or gap regions in our alignment. Now, these could be missing regions of structure, which is likely the case in this example, or they could be real you know, gaps when you have different subfamilies included. This red bar at the top uh, indicates the level of sequence conservation per position in your alignment. And in this case, everything is very conserved, as we'll see down below. There's also an overview of the sequence similarity, a clustering based on sequence identity here. Okay, so things are very similar. We also have conservation per position, both in the aligned structure set, and of course these structures are very similar. But you can also view that in terms of the wider or larger PFAM defined family. So you can see individual positions that are uh, very conserved in this family. You can also view the alignment itself here. And you can see these gap regions in more details. For example, this structure, an option where we can actually omit PDB structures with missing, missing in-structure residues. So we can click that and that'll exclude automatically those structures. Moving on to the fit tab, you'll see the results of rigid core based supposition and you can compare that to the more traditional C alpha based uh, supposition if you wish. Notice that the central beta sheet region here for example is maybe not quite as well superposed as it would be with our uh, core based approach which is currently the preferred approach for future uh, PCA based analysis in tab 4. You can download and view this supposition in PyMol. And this would launch the PyMol app so you could view that in additional details there. You can also inspect the pairwise RMSD in terms of a, a clustering dendrogram or alternatively as a histogram. You can see that there may be three peaks here in this histogram that's maybe consistent with the three clusters that we could potentially define here in terms of RMSD. Okay, you can optionally choose as many clusters as you like to color. The auto detect here suggests that there's two major clusters. And visually, you might argue that there's three clusters. 
we can also look at the displacements per position or the, the RMSF the root mean square of, of those deviations in fact here you can see there are certain regions that uh, contribute to those RMSD values here these tend to be loop regions in this case the grey bars represent beta strands the black bars represent alpha helices this would be beta 1 alpha 1 beta 2 beta 3 etc in the structure you can also see details of these core determination procedure for example between glycine 77 and threonine 87 there's 11 residues defined as our as our core we can see summaries of the pairwise rmsd values and cluster representatives moving on to the pca tab here we have uh, really one of the major and most important results from the app namely this in panel uh, b here we have this mapping or a principal component based mapping really of how all these structures that we've uh, taken through our analysis are related to each other in terms of the major displacements captured by uh, the principal components of their Cartesian coordinates. So what we see here is this conformer plot and each point here represents an individual structure and we can uh, click on these to see what these structures are for example. And we can see an overview that the first two components here describe uh, close to 73% of the total mean square displacement or variance in that original coordinate uh, data. Now when you click on these what we can see is your structure identifiers that's linked to a table below here so we can actually find out what this grouping is is telling us here. So for example these uh, structures in blue these are all uh, either nucleotide free so no ligand bound or just a single phosphate bound probably in the crystallization media whereas this other grouping here for example these black structures if we begin to click on those we'll start to see those highlighted below in this table and you'll see that these are all associated with a GDP a guanine diphosphate and a, a magnesium ion in this particular case and then if we were scrolling down we can begin to see that these green structures here we click on them they'll be highlighted above they're all associated with something called a gcp this is a, a, a gtp analog with a, a carbon in there in the bridging oxygen if we click here we'll start to see um, what this what this uh, molecule looks like here okay we'll turn it back so we have gcp gnp another gtp analog or things like uh, CIG, which is a, a caged GTP. So again, you see the three phosphate groups here. Compared to, if we go back, we would have seen the, you know, the two phosphate groups of the of the GDP here. Here's the two phosphate groups compared to the three in the second or third cluster here. So what we're beginning to see are uh, conformational relationships, and we're beginning to get some insight into what. It is about those particular structures that leads to these distinct conformations here. Now, here we're viewing only the first two principal components, and that describes 73%. Uh, we should also, of course, look at the third component here, and we can do that either by changing these axes, of course, or we can even do it by looking at a, a 3D plot. And there we see these same groupings. We see this um, ligand free or phosphate bound group alone is really quite distinct from these other three clusters here where we had our GDP, GDP analog and then some other strange structures that we might want to uh, dig into some intermediate structures here. Okay, We can um, also look at the components, so here's just the first component of, or others. Uh, and this is the, the residue-wise loadings, or how those original positions, the residues, contribute to each of these principal components. And we can see that for this first component, it's really all this loop, the so-called switch one loop in these small G proteins that cradles the nucleotide binding site that, that's uh, leading to the majority of what's described in PC2. In PC1, uh, sorry, PC2, we have more of this loop, the so-called switch two loop. And we can look at others, okay? And you can see these either in this spread view or um, you know all together. Moving on to our ensemble number mode analysis or ENMA tab, we can click the run ENMA button here 
And what this will do is perform normal mode analysis on all the structures that are selected. All these structures here in our plot that have the red circles around them, we can exclude or include more. You might want to exclude structures because the calculation will run a little bit uh, faster. Uh, but of course we can include all here if we want. And we can click the Run Ensemble Normal Mode Analysis tab here and that'll start this calculation and critically here the calculation is run in such a way as it allows us to compare across structures with different composition that's different sequence lengths and indeed different sequence composition itself and then it will display these results um, both in a traditional way where you can see the results of individual structures like this one here's mode one for a particular structure here you can see this switch to loop is being featured here but Really what's important here is this panel C where we're grouping them according to that PCA based clustering that we established in the previous tab and we can see that for that cluster 1, if we go back for a moment to, to cluster 1 here, these blue structures which are over here in our PC plot separate from the others along PC1, they have a distinct flexibility here Sorry, of this first loop. Okay, so when you have an open switch one loop, these are more flexible. Okay, and then what we're seeing with those GDP and GTP structures, or the GDP in particular, is they have a more uh, flexible loop here and a little subsequent helix, this switch two region. So we're beginning to see the basis for the distinct conformations that are out there for this particular protein family, and that they are indeed associated with distinct flexibilities for these regions as determined by this ensemble normal mode analysis that allows us to compare across structures of different sequence and different sequence composition. Now our analysis so far has really um, focused on a quite closely related set in terms of their uh, actual sequence but the app is not limited to that anyway. You can decide how far in sequence space you go or if you include multiple families or superfamilies or focus on a single subfamily. The choice is really up to you. We can um, dig into these results in more details. You can uh, get your individual uh, overlaps, for example, for different structures. You can cluster here by the root mean square inner product of the modes. So here's an example where again we're seeing these three or four uh, clusters come up. Right? This is the what the mode analysis is telling us. RMSD maybe not so clear in this structure partition. PCA particularly clear. And indeed the, the RMSIP you could argue is even clearer than this. Okay. We can again get the the high resolution PDFs of these. But what I want to draw your attention to finally in closing is this final tab, which is our, our report, which will generate a summary report that covers every choice that you entered into the app. Now you'll notice at the top there's an optional download, so as well as this HTML page, you can obtain that as a PDF or Word document. Let's download the PDF. And here's the, the PDF with today's date. We have our details of our analysis, the uh, various sections, just like the online format. But here, you know, obviously you can save this or distribute it to your, your collaborators, for example. What I should also point out in this report is that if I go back to the top, there's a link in here which will allow you to revisit your analysis, which will come preloaded with the last choices that you had. So you can visit this link. This is your, your ID for your session ID, your so-called session ID here with the date and this unique code will allow you to revisit your analysis at any time and, and change it, make, make changes, see what effect including or excluding different structures might have on your results. Uh, with that, I, I'd like to close. We'd like to very much hear your comments and your feedback so we can work to improve this app. Thank you.